So we're going to be talking about the Daily Laws, written by Robert Greene. Um, I've always enjoyed the work of Robert Greene because I like the way he views the world as like a dark place that you need to navigate through it. Um, it's almost like he's got this Machiavellian perspective. And I think that's really honest. I think he may refer to that as intense realism. Anyway, when you look at this book, The Daily Laws, it has a different type of setup because each page is like different types of wisdom and the chapters are actually months. So like chapter one is January, chapter two is February, chapter three is March, etc. So we're just going to discuss three concepts from each chapter. And the first concept, well, actually, before I get to the first concept, I'll get to the premise of the first concept. So the premise is, is that we all have a life task. And what's underlying this is, quote, all of us are born unique, end of quote, meaning that our DNA is unique, but we need to find our life task, which is defined as, you know, your purpose. And actually Robert Greene details that at the age of eight, he knew he wanted to be a writer. And then on top of this premise is this whole concept of the inner voice that can guide us to our life task. And to do this, we need to reconnect with our childhood, which links to the first interesting concept. And I'd like to hear your opinion on this is the real secret. And um, according to Robert Greene, the real secret is the acknowledgement that the brain is the outcome of six million years of evolution. So the brain is the path to real mastery. So what's, what's your thoughts on that? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I guess I represent all those people who read uh, the 48 laws on a train back and forth to London or something. Um, and so I haven't read this book and uh, what you're getting here is my instant reactions. Um, yeah, I completely understand the idea of the life task, I think, uh, but let me, let me just put it in the perspective in which I would see it. Um, I think it's extremely difficult for somebody, at least most people, uh, to say in their early years, I want to be X or I want to do Y. Um, what we do know is that some things interest us vastly more than other things. And uh, also, we're better at some things uh, than other things. Uh, there are a few exceptions. So, for example, um, people often think they're great singers, and the only person who doesn't realise that they're not is themselves. Um, but generally speaking, you know, I, I think there's a lot of coincidence between um, what we enjoy and what we're good at. And it seems to me the the purpose of life and the struggle of life in that in that context uh, has to do with um, how we prepare ourselves to meet many possible opportunities. <clears throat> and not least to prepare ourselves to take those opportunities. So I think we're, we're, a, we're a complex mixture, and, and I think this parallels our evolutionary journey over those millions of years, um, whereby we have um, a basic uh, skill set, some of which we are now our own masters in developing, and then the real, uh, where, where, we, where we need not just the brains and the preparation, but the courage, is then to take opportunities as they present themselves for which we have long prepared. So you're concurring, you agree with this like life task? I, I would ethos. say I would say generally yes, but, mm -hmm. but not to the extent of saying at an early stage we can say we definitely want to do X or we definitely want to do Y. So this is a brief intermission. I hope you're enjoying the journey. And if you are enjoying the journey, why not consider hitting the like button and subscribe? I repeat, that's hitting the like button and subscribe. And with that being said, let's return to the program. So another concept that, that I really enjoyed from this book was, again, it was under the life task element, is that under listen to your authority, it says that you need to engage with your higher purpose through your uniqueness. And this involves working every day. So to put it in context, you know, Picasso's higher purpose, one would assume would be art, and he painted every day. Apparently, um, the final day on, it, on this earth, he painted the day before. Um, Shakespeare, I would argue, his higher purpose would be of a writer. And his uniqueness, perhaps, was his excellence of telling a story. What, what would you say with regards to that? Mm. 
Well, that, that's um, that's a very interesting one. So, um, so my interpretation of that is that if you do everything every day, that's precisely what you are doing. You're taking, and in fact, you're doing it in a better way because you're getting the muscle memory, uh, you're getting the imprint on your brain, you're mm -hmm. setting up the patterns and the uh, and the habits um, that lead to, uh, and, and you know, which are the equivalent of putting the paving stones down on the pathway to that goal. So I, I completely understand the uh, and agree with um, the idea that you should practice, 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 because you become what you do. Yeah. It's almost like a tennis player, isn't it? If you if you if you're a tennis player, and you play once every two weeks, you're not going to be as good as that person who plays every day. So I think I think I think there is definitely a solid argument that regardless what path you take, whether it's art, whether it's boxing, whether it's science, you have to work on it every day. I guess the only thing I would add is you have to work on it effectively. Mm. Every okay. day. But suppose, suppose, for example, you're in a situation where um, you do work every day, but we all, you know, I mean, we all get bored. We all get fatigued in some way. We have bad days. Yeah. How do you get through those? Because, uh, you know, when you're in that position, let's say, let's say, I don't know, let's say you're a chess player. You've learned, you know, a thousand or ten thousand openings and uh, you suddenly find that your rating is, has plateaued. You're, you're not even enjoying it anymore. Um, should you associate that feeling of um, somewhat something of, I suppose, there's an element of defeat there, there's an element mm. of boredom, there's an element of, you know, of resistance. Uh, what should you do in that situation and how do you judge whether to carry on or to jump ships and do something else? That's a really good question. I guess it depends on, depends on the context, thinking of you know, I guess if you're, you're a writer and you write every day and then you feel like now you've reached a point where you've plateaued and you're not writing good material anymore, I guess in that argument you could say, okay, now you've got to go out there and live a bit more mm -hmm. and then go back to your daily routine. So it's almost like you've got to absorb these new experiences and these new experiences will stimulate the brain. Yeah. Yeah, so get some uh, reflection, re yeah. relaxation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I guess the other, um, <clears throat> on that, I mean, I'm just thinking back to my own experiences. So, um, you know, when I, when I did a physics degree, for example, um, I can certainly tell you there were elements of electronics that could, to this day, put me to sleep. <clears throat> um, the You know, you have to take the rough with the smooth and the interesting bits. Um, uh, but I think in that situation, what kept me going was the fact that I had, uh, if I kept going, I would achieve a goal. I would get my certificate. I would um, actually have a, a you know a, a mark in the sand that I, that I could use for the rest of my life, um, and also people around me chasing me, disciplining me, you know, in, in the sense of um, they expect things to be done. So is it is it also a question of um, being part of a community? Is there some mm. Is it, an, is it an individual thing or is it or, or how do you do you seek support so the next part of this first chapter and to conclude this particular part is um, I, I believe the heading is let a sense of purpose guide you and there's this premise that is set out that modern society the larger purse the larger purpose is missing and previously this purpose would have been su supplied by an organized religion so here it's saying you know this sense of purpose it needs to guide you and I guess this stimulates some interesting questions or an interesting question which is you know what is life without a purpose and how do we find our life's purpose and I guess the way Robert Greene would answer that is to tapping into your unique DNA and listen to this inner voice so when you know when he says like let a sense of purpose guide you I guess in a sense like to put that in a real terms if you've got someone who wants to be a writer but is working in a coffee shop not that there's anything wrong with working in a coffee oh, shop all the time. but that's you know that's that's not their life purpose I guess to let the sense of purpose guide you for that person who wants to be the writer 
is to listen to that voice of being the writer mm -hmm. and then trying to devote time every day to become the writer. Is I, that how you would interpret that? Because that's yeah, how I interpret I, that. Absolutely, because it develops the, the habit of using and developing the skill. You mm. know, pretty much anything that's worth doing requires some sort of skill. Yeah. And if you're going to do it in, a, in at least in today's world, when you're exposed to everyone else who's doing it uh, in a competitive environment generally, um, you know, and you want, you want to reach some level that, that is recognizable as, uh, as, a, as an achievement, um, absolutely, you, you need to develop those skills and you need to do it, you know, with, um, with energy. You know, you need to be yeah. able to do it when, when you don't feel like doing it and uh, be really committed to it. So kind of to bring it back to the, the Daily Laws context, I guess when, when he's stating about let the sense of purpose guide you, I'm sensing what he's saying is that if you have that drive to be a writer, then you should go towards that. If you have a drive to be an architect, you should go towards that and you should take practical steps, whether it's, you know, working every day, getting a mentor, going through education, whether that's formal or informal. But it's this whole thing of the power of purpose. Um, and in a sense, as human beings on a psychological level, without purpose, can we say that we're nothing? And I guess to conclude this chapter, and I don't know if you agree with this, I think with regards to the real secret, so it's not the law of attraction, the real secret is to understand that the brain is the outcome of six million years of evolution, and therefore our brains, are you know that they're, they're they're very primed and ready to do the job the job being of real mastery I, I think there's some power in that message and i think this whole premise of um engaging with your higher purpose i think it can have some significant value and understanding the power of having a purpose and then trying to go through the process of fulfilling the purpose would you What's your thoughts on that, just to conclude this part? Mm. Well, all of this is nothing without action. So the key word there, I think, is fulfilling the purpose. Yeah. And, and I think that um, activates the theory uh, and uh, stimulates things like, uh, as you mentioned, the practice, the rehearsal, the, um, you know, the, the doing, uh, learning by doing. Everything is about doing, ultimately. Um, so yeah, I com completely uh, uh, agree with the ideas there, but I have uh, a huge misgiving in all of this, which is, or, or a doubt, which is, there are people, I think, uh, who, uh, however hard they search, can't find that purpose or can't find that drive or direction. Mm. Now, the, So, you know, uh, the question to me is, um, uh, now that we've dealt with everybody else, um, how do we how do we kindle a sense of purpose in people who don't feel it um, naturally or don't don't aren't aware of it or can't find it even if they search for it? That's a good point because it's almost like the premise of the book is that find your inner voice, meaning that you if have you an inner voice. Yep. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you don't have an inner voice? How do you find? that inner voice mm. and I think that's a very logical well, point it might to be make. meditation might, yeah, yeah yeah might be asking friends but clearly he had that inner voice since he was eight Absolutely. so it's not a question he didn't need to find that inner voice but like you said some people they may need help in finding that inner voice 